Today we focus on an important discussion sparked by a recent incident that has drawn widespread attention. And joining us is Dr. Patrice Charles King, a distinguished counseling psychologist from the Phoenix Counseling Center. We're going to explore the potential psychological impact arising from incidents involving students and law enforcement. Good morning, Dr. Charles King. How are you this morning? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Always great to have you. Uh, so f to, to put in context, I, we spoke about in our Hot Topics yesterday about the recent incident between um, the police officer and the 11-year-old child. I, I think it, for us, physical abuse is something that we, we can almost put a finger on, but emotional and psychological, I think, is where our awareness and our emotional intelligence needs to be heightened. So talk to me a little bit about that, emotional and psychological abuse when it relates to children. Well, you know, one of the things that I, and I actually just watched the video mm -hmm. last night mm -hmm. and I watched it over and over again. And I heard the distress in this child's voice, but I also saw and heard him, you know, literally take on a fight response because the whole entire situation to him was a threat mm -hmm. um, or he felt like he was in danger or that his dad, his father was in danger. And so, you know, the typical fight, flight, freeze and fawn response um, to, to trauma or to, to a perceived threat. And what his response was, was fight. And so he literally was, was speaking about how his, his father is the only person that he has. His father, his mother left him. Um, his father was is the only one that's taking care of him and his and his little sister. And nobody ever was ever there for his father, so or fought for his father. So he has to fight for his father. Now just imagine an eleven year old who is literally fighting for his survival. Mm -hmm. And so that is going to that that type of response or traumatic event could definitely cause um, him to have anxiety disorders. He could develop generalized anxiety, panic disorders. He could, he could have post-traumatic stress disorders, um, especially if um, his reaction to the symptom or to the event persists. So if he's having flashbacks, if he's if he's having um, reminders, so every time he sees a police or every time he sees a police car, he remembers his father being handcuffed. It, you know, it definitely could bring about emotional damage. Uh, but, uh, Dr. King, how does, how does one treat with uh, a child like this who has gone through a situation like this um, going forward? Because you've mentioned a number of the, the repercussions, possible re repercussions, certainly in terms of the different types of disorders. But what's, mm -hmm. what can be done to, to, to help heal that child and to, to, to kind of bring them back to a, a, a calm, centered space? Um, I, I would prefer two things. I, I like cognitive behavior therapy. And this can be effective in helping him to cope with the trauma. It helps him to understand and change his thought patterns that may lead to harmful behavior or feelings of distress because we don't want him to now be so um, defensive against authority and you start to see a, a type of defiant behavior coming out. Um, he is 11 and so he not as far as his thinking skills are concerned be mature or developed enough so play therapy is also um, particularly effective for younger children who are unable to articulate their feelings because it allows them to express their experiences and emotions through a natural self-guided and self-healing process is there a role for in this particular instance uh, the police uh, to, to participate in, in that therapy. Uh, or generally speaking, though, for persons who recognize that they've emotionally or psychologically abused a child, is there a role for them in that healing process? Absolutely. It's, this entire thing has societal implications. It's, a, it's very important to address the source of the trauma. So in this case, it's very beneficial to look at how law enforcement interacts with 
the citizens, um, particularly with minors, the presence of minors, proper training and guidelines um, need to be implemented to prevent such incidents from um, reoccurring. Community efforts need to be done to improve relations and trust between law enforcement and residents, um, especially the minority um, in communities. The fact is, what we don't want, we don't want a setback where children are now seeing law enforcement as the enemy and not the person that's supposed to be protecting them. We don't want them to develop an attachment, meaning, okay, there are protectors, they help to keep the law or an avoidance. I'm afraid of them. Should I run when I see a police? I know in this particular instance, we're talking about law enforcement, Patrice, but earlier in our Hot Topics, we raised an incident that happened in a high school um, where a teacher tried to, to part an altercation and then the student attacked the teacher. So, so I feel like we're seeing more and more instances of children and young people almost pushing back at authority figures. And, and I want to figure out what is happening. Um, is it that we have to start developing a more sense of awareness that children, yes, they're children, but they're humans too, and that what you spoke about in terms of the flight or fight response, we have to be more aware of how we handle them in situations like these? Um, I don't think that we are taking into consideration what our trauma responses are. Mm -hmm. He could have easily froze. He could have easily tried to run away. Um, he could have, or he could have what we call fawn, which is just appease or placate the source of the threat. So he would just give in to or into what the police is saying or behave in a way that would reduce the tension in the situation. But this does not speak to something that's conscious. It's, it's, it's not a consciously chosen response. In other words, it, it's instinctual. So if you are raised in a situation or where you feel that you have to protect. He felt like he had to protect himself or his father, mm. you know, um, and it comes with a surge of anger, that boost of, of adrenaline. And as far as children are concerned, we don't know what the situation is at home. Mm. We don't know if there's any abuse taking place at home. We don't know if there's any abuse taking place in the community or even within the classroom. Yes, I can understand where you're saying that children are apparent to be more defiant um, towards authority, but we definitely have to look on their social skills. And it's a thinking skill that develops based on their maturity. It's developed and it's, it's, it's also developed based on the investment that a parent gives to their child, the input, how you teach your child to recognize social cues and how to respond to specific social cues. Mm -hmm. So again, we're going to take this right back home. We're going to take this right back to parents. But unfortunately, there are some parents that don't know themselves. There are so par some parents that are so hot headed that they get into a situation and instead of solving a problem in a mature um, way or, or, or a peaceful way, what they will do is they will rage they were running, they will fight, they will stab. And so understanding the consequences of your actions, understanding how to recognize what you're feeling so that you respond appropriately and not impulsively reacting in an unhealthy way or unrealistic way is one of the things that we definitely need to look at as a community. And that's exactly where I was going to go just now because I, my question would, or it still is, how do we prepare parents to prepare their children for you know a variety of circumstances you spoke to the different types of responses um the fight the flight the fawn the freeze right but how do is, is, is that something parents can do to kind, kind of build their, their their children's preparedness i can't say resistance but their preparedness to certain types of um, traumatic situations Absolutely. And first, modeling behavior is one of the most important things. Mm. You know, as a, um, a psychologist that specializes in marriage and also family therapy, um, the whole family needs to understand how to react. And so sometimes parents need to think about what they're thinking, think about how they 
they even discipline their children, the, the type of discipline structure that they create in their home for school and for the community, not just in the home. Um, parents need to be able to, if, they're, if you're constantly losing your temper and you're constantly reacting to your own children within your home, that's what you're teaching your child to do. If there is bullying taking place within the home, that's actually what that child is going to take, especially if they're the one that's being bullied, back to school. So parents do need to, if, especially if the teacher or school, you're getting a lot of complaints about how your child is responding to issues or responding to authority, you need to just stop for a moment and not get defensive don't feel defeated or criticized, but take a look at what it is that's taking place at home and how you are responding and teaching your child. One other one for you quickly. Are you aware or can you share with us whether state or privately resources that parents can access to arm themselves in the way that you've, you've shared just now? Okay, well, as I said, privately, I am a family therapist at the Phoenix Counseling Center, and I can be located um, online at Instagram at the Phoenix Counseling Center. And there are government organizations also. There is the National Parenting Support Commission, which is located within the Ministry of Education, and their sole purpose is to educate parents, parenting education, to support the family. Awesome. Those are the two. Awesome. I, also, I, th I also think CPFSA has a um, the Child Protection and Family Service Agency also has, uh, uh, I guess, a section that deals with family also. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dr. Patrice Charles King, for speaking with us. I'll just add this. Parents, guardians, we know it's not an easy job, but, but the resources are there. She just named a couple of them. Yeah. Just go out, find them, get the support you need. Absolutely. As a counseling psychologist from the Phoenix Counseling Center, Dr. Patrice Charles King. After the break, we take a close up look at the movie Chokehold. Stay with us. <laughs> 